Yeah, yeah, sure. We have overreacted to the first week of results in the heroic raid. However, it is now time to overreact to a different thing, an also quite popular activity known as Mythic Plus. Because data is starting to flood in, so we now get to see the first results of number one, how popular certain specs are, what have been their performance in Mythic Plus keys, what even is the, you know, average high level keys being done currently, the easiest and the hardest keys so far in Mythic Plus, if we see everything going according to plan and according to what we saw doing very well, for example, in the beta of Mythic Plus just a few weeks ago compared to now and what is changing. Because, you know, with this reset coming in, it is now more and more likely that more and more specs are getting their hands on a four-piece set bonus. Most of these players being able to push eight, nine or ten keys already have their free tier token from the achievement, either from Mythic Plus or from the Heroic ahead of the curve achievement, plus their first catalyst piece, so it's practically a two-piece set bonus guarantee, and if they got also into normal or into the heroic raid to snatch a couple more tier pieces. So we start to see the slow forming of the full power of the specs. Yes, sure, we are still some 20 plus item levels below what is going to be the top tier item level for the season. However, that's not what we are here. We are here to overreact. So starting with just the analytical data, with no, with, without any author's opinion about it, just looking at the runs taken straight from Raider.io, as well as the public runs on Warcraft logs, this is the result for now. Number one, if you were wondering about the easy or the hard key of the season for now, we have already a pretty solid answer being Myths of Tirna Sith being the easiest key and at the moment City of Threads is sitting happily as the hardest key of the season. The tank tier list at the moment sees Vengeance Demon Hunter as the number one tank of this very long three days season, followed by Guardian Druid and then Brewmaster Monk, Blood Death Knight Protection. Paladin and Protection Warrior. Now, we already have the first surprise perhaps in here, talking about the Blood Death Knight. We already had sort of an idea in our calls for the season, the predictions of the season of about Vengeance Demon Hunter as well as Guardian Druid. However, who was supposed to be next to them was Blood Death Knight. It is a traditionally very popular tank, even if we're not talking about raiding right now. It is the most popular tank in the raid at the moment. But, you know, this comes from the very conclusive data of having just slightly less blood death knights completing a plus 10 on time. In just a few days, if not by the next reset, we will be far above the plus 10 limit, so perhaps it is not still that telling. We could say the same about healers, where we see Restoration Druid at the very top, followed by Restoration Shaman and Preservation Evoker. Now again, if we bring back our predictions of the season, talking about especially the Mythic Plus power level, would it put easily Resto Druid and Resto Shaman and Preservation Evoker as the three main characters of Mythic Plus for the season, but we also put Holy Paladin, which seems to be lagging behind just a bit. When it comes to the DPS, both the melee, as well as the ranged DPS. We don't talk about that thing at the top, we have gotten sick of it for the second half of Dragonflight already. We can also ignore some of the specs we knew about already, so we can congratulate ourselves for the, you know, the correct calls on some of these picks, like for example, both of the shamans, Elemental and Enhancement, as well as Arcane Mage, but also Assassination Rogue, Havoc Demon Hunter, Fury Warrior, Frost Death Knight, Frost Mage as well. So we are here instead to talk about the surprises. The surprises being Marksmanship Hunter, as well as Red Paladin, as well as Balanced Druid. Although, to be fair, Balanced Druid has been buffed recently, so we did not have the full knowledge of the power of Balance before these buffs. We can, however, also look at a few more conclusive results, for example, the actual DPS numbers being shown by the specs in Mythic Plus. From these results, we can see some of the familiar faces we have just mentioned, both of the DK specs as well as both of the Shaman specs doing very well. One that perhaps might be surprising definitely is Destruction Warlock, because we haven't even mentioned it so far, yet Destruction Warlock seems to be having pretty decent average results at the moment. A few other unsurprising results like Assassination as well as Outlaw Rogue, Devastation Evoker, Fury Warrior were pointed to be doing pretty well in Mythic Plus. When you're talking about, you know, AoE, 
turbo AoE, Mongo, Cleave type of damage, pretty good. Same for Red Paladin. Red Paladin wasn't really that exciting when it came, for example, to single target damage, but their AoE damage is still quite powerful. And early on in Mythic Plus, without you know that much knowledge about key levels and keys still being pretty low, the results have been quite good. Pretty funny, after all of the talks about mages being powerful, that at the moment, Arcane, but also Frost, which have been poised to be quite good this season, are amongst the bottom half of the performers, amongst other specs that you would have expected being there in the first place, like Feral, like Arms Warrior, like even Subtlety Rogue, mostly due to the power of the other two rogues, more so than Subtlety being weak. What you can see from this, however, isn't just the DPS number, which, you know, hour by hour will change, perhaps even refreshing this page already will have some numbers changed, isn't just the DPS number itself, but also the runs, which tell you, of course, the popularity as well, because Destruction Warlock is doing quite well, but at the moment, it's not really the spec of choice for Warlocks, for example, it is clearly affliction. Same goes, for example, with the difference between the DKs, where Frost is the more popular option over Unholy despite a similar result at the moment. You could say the same about the popularity of Survival, way below Marksmanship despite similar results, and a few others, like for example Subtlety being very very scarcely played, same goes for same goes for Fire Mage. We could also take a look at the other kind of damage, the healer damage as well as the tank damage. Something that was quite apparent from the get-go was the heavy damage that Preservation Evokers are able to do, you know, almost for free just opening up with fire breath and a few free living flames offers them a lot of damage in their chrono warden build which is practically even matching the spec that is you know supposed to be doing damage to be healing preservation is actually almost matching them when it comes to tanks though while we have been mentioning Vengeance Demon Hunter doing quite well together with Guardian Druid, Guardian actually does have one of the weakest damages so far when it comes to tanks. And it's actually Prot Warrior, Mountain Thane Prot Warrior, that is bringing in the damage as a tank. You can despair even more or perhaps get hyped even more when you look at the actual popularity of the picks so far. Because one thing is clearing high keys, as we mentioned, one thing is being being picked for high keys right now, which means, you know, plus 10 and um, plus 11 keys. And another one is the will of the people. What are the players actually playing? You do see that there is some level of advantages when it comes to healers and tanks, right? Resto Shaman and Blood DK. That seems to be the duo of popular picks at the moment. But then after that, though, it's quite good. It's quite good to see that there is a lot of a lot of choice at the moment for the DPS. Obviously, we're not lying to each other. We are going to get back to something like this in just a few weeks. OK, it is more or less expected to see this kind of diversity in the first week. But even if you consider and compare the first week of Dragonflight, with the first week of The War Within, the first week of Dragonflight was a bit more lopsided. You know, we already had multiple DPS specs over 10%. In fact, we had one, two, three, four, five different DPS specs, as well as one very clear winning tank, which was over 50%. Now, if you go to the first few days, it's not, it's not quite there yet. It's only Arcane, which is just barely passing the 11%, and Frost Mage is actually gaining popularity by the minute so it might even drop below this benchmark we will see if blood decay will continue to be this popular same goes for rest of shaman as the week goes by players gain more and more item level more and more specs and and players get into higher key levels of mythic plus to see the full results of the performance of the specs in the different mythic plus keys which as we mentioned we do have already kind of an idea of which are the easy ones and which are the, the more challenging ones, as well as also, of course, comparing all of this early set of results with the, you know, the idea you made in your mind and in your head about which specs were going to be popular, which specs were going to be played a lot. You know, some things, of course, still scare you because we haven't mentioned the innominable spec, but amongst all of this, if we are looking at the spec with the most number of players, you have Frost DK, you have Fury Warrior, Arcane Mage, and then you have 
the one, which is still kind of, you know, a possible fear of, of uh, repeating what we have been seeing pretty much for the past seasons of Dragonflight since Augmentation Evoker was introduced. That is perhaps one of the current fears of the specs in Mythic Plus, especially, particularly, a couple of specs, namely the one that you can barely see here, Devastation, and the other one that you can see here for now, much more, Preservation. Obviously, whenever this thing right here becomes popular, then the other specs in the same class tend to suffer more. And this is something we have touched on for other specs. It's all good when you look at the popularity of Blood, and if you're a DPS, you might be happy about the current damage of Frost and Unholy, especially Frost DK. But what happens when two specs of the same class are popular at the same time? We have already held actually multiple conferences on this in the previous expansion, pointing out that it is very, very rare to see two specs of the same class be meta at the same time. Very, very often, whenever one spec becomes popular, the other one withers and dies mercilessly. We have seen this, for example, with Prot and Holy. Holy gains popularity, protection disappears into nothingness. You had before things like Discipline was very, very popular. Shadow Priest wasn't even visible. And then Shadow Priest becomes meta and Discipline goes away. You had the same with Havoc. Havoc starts very popular, Vengeance is popular, eventually Vengeance takes over and as a result Havoc disappears. This is something we have seen time and time again. So you do have, you do have the risk of this repeating again in The War Within. So you start looking for, for matching pairs of specs. So like Rat and Holy. Resto Shaman and the two DPS Shaman specs, for example, that could be also an interesting divide between the two, choosing which of the of the picks to go for in your group. You have Blood and the two DPS specs. You also have the Warriors now with protection starting out quite popular. In fact, the third most popular for like the first three days of Mythic Plus with the DPS Warrior. These are some kinds of head-to-head um, -head matches that very often in a few weeks end up being, you know, dominated by one spec at the cost of the other, which ends up, you know, sort of falling out of the meta. So it's also something that will be worth keeping an eye out on as we keep going through this week to see the development of the popularity of the specs as soon as you start seeing you know, a, a development of, of the meta. A lot of players right now are still busy, you know, doing things like running splits of normal and heroic, re-clearing the raid, doing mythic raiding, so there is less focus at the moment into mythic plus. A lot of the focus in mythic plus is just to farm plus nine keys for crests, so you get to actually craft your gear for the moment, right? So, after this weekend, with the end of this reset and the beginning of the next reset, is when you will start seeing even more, you know, developments when it comes to the meta of Mythic Plus. But for now, this was, for a reason, the early look, the early eye test at how things have been going in Mythic Plus so far. So, for today, on this... What is this? On this Friday, it is now time to leave each other with this Mythic Plus early recap. We are starting, as usual, the goodbyes by thanking everyone who has been watching the video, as well as supporting completely for free by liking and commenting down below, as well as subscribing to the channel itself. Now, with these things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching. See you guys tomorrow, and in the meantime... Oh my god, finally! It's time to eat! I've been playing for like 14 hours non-stop. Give me a break!